morning. The truth is our priority and we give justice to your curiosity. Indeed, truth, justice and curiosity shall be pursued and verified. Welcome to Vibrant Morning. I'm Peter Odiambo. And I am Chukemoi Rugut. Here are the stories making the headlines. Waste management becomes a threat around Maseno town. Vibrant media digs into insecurity around Maseno University. 28th of May, mm -hmm. I remember very well. It was on a Thursday night. And also this morning, one of our own reporter, Spencer Brandy, brings us an exclusive interview with Felicity Moody's, the founder of Freedom in Healing. Welcome. Management of solid and liquid waste around Maseno and its environs has been a challenge. Which has risked the lives of residents. Kelsey Dorita with the reports. Good hygiene and sanitation is a vital aspect in human life as much as health is concerned. This is in regard to the recent rise and outbreak of cholera in some parts of the country. Due to the poor waste management and disposal around Maseno town, the students of the institution, as well as the community residing around its environs, are at a greater risk of being infected with a variety of diseases related to poor hygiene. Kuna takataka kila mahali, maji na flow, as in nata ujuya ni, ni, ni uchafu tu kila mahali. Uh, in terms of safety, siju kana feel safe yu design. Ujuya na uchafu yote mtu neza pata, pata magonjwa tu yu wakifuala. Yeah. The, the garbage affects the health of the students, residents and every person. Behind is the Caroline Hostel, we have the degree hostels, the garbage is all over. I want us to agree that by 2011, sincerely speaking, there were no garbages here. The town, which hosts a population of approximately 20,000 residents, of whom most are students, lacks a proper waste management committee and this has necessitated them to find their own ways of disposing garbage. This brings a lot of harm to the residents' health, which might also lead to death. The negligence of the county government administration has prompted some of the residents to come out and volunteer to clean up the town, Mr. Ogola being one of them. You cannot see these things passing this way, and then you wait for them to pass this way. These are things, and these are people who are doing this. He says that Maseno has insufficient town cleaners who cannot manage to clean up the whole town on their own, and people like him have come out to help them see that the town is neat and tidy. There's a one only cleaner who is working here. He's only one. Clean the Maseno. That's not good. In a recent case, Maseno University was issued with a notice of closure by the National Environmental and Management Authority over poor waste disposal, drainage and leaking sewage systems. The school constructed a water treatment plant, but some sewers are still leaking, and this shows how bad the situation at hand is. You know, we've given Maseno, we've been with them for a very long time. We had a compliance journey with Maseno University, and they are not complying with the restoration orders given. We have no option to other than to ensure that the university will be closed by next week. The residents are calling out to the relevant local authorities to step up to their responsibility and make sure that the town is clean by ensuring that there is a more convenient, safe and effective waste disposal method for the well-being of the people. Abda was say out of the place fit ya could dump your waste place that dispose any garbage fit. Uh one is a recruit to Atupia ku ku narisha and you Ata ili atatu ni unacheki hii design, hii makeja, azina place ni utatupa west ya ni. There is a place that was designed for garbage control. So garbage control in Maseno should be controlled by the county government, not school. Because this is a town. It's a municipal center and every service that is needed in a municipal center should be found within Maseno. I'm not going to tell you in this one thing is that cleanliness start by yourself. You cannot stay in front of your neighbor and yet you are smelling. For years, waste management has been a problem in Maseno and its environs, affecting the nature of this new town and putting the residents at a risk of contracting diseases such as cholera. Will this issue ever be solved? Kelsey Dorita, Vibrant Media Maseno.
the rise of sexual and gender-based violence globally has made it necessary for most stakeholders to join in the battle against them. In today's interview, let's join Spencer Brandy with an exclusive interview. Um, thank you so much, Peter and Rugot in studio. Uh, today we are in Kisumu at Kibos area, where I'm going to have an amazing guest. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm also fine. Thank you. It's lovely. Thank you. Um, tell us, who is you? My name is Felicity Mudes. Um, I am a spoken word artist and I also run an organization co-founded by my sister. It's called Freedom and Healing. We deal with issues, anti-sexual violence and mental health amongst minors. Who inspired you to start this organization? Honestly, it was my own experiences because um, there are things I have been through, especially growing up that I felt, where can we bridge the gap for young people? Because a lot of times when you tell someone who's old, but Nikona shit or Nikona stress, and then they ask you, when you can talk to And of course, when Corona happened, that was around the time we registered the organization, there were a spike in um, issues, sexual violence, and we said, let's do something about it. Mm -hmm. I was defiled, uh, about seven going on eight and part of eight, it happened for uh, about a month. And I did not speak about it to anyone because it felt like one of those, ah, how can I say this? Uh, what, how will people think about me when I say this? So I kept quiet about it. But the thing with trauma is the more you keep quiet and you do not share anything about what you went through, then depression hits at some okay. point, however mm -hmm. much you want to avoid it. Have you faced any challenge? Um, uh, the greatest challenge for me has been me. Mm -hmm. You've ever wanted to do something that sounds so much bigger than you are. Exactly. And then uh, when it's starting, it's like, yay, so exciting. Let's change the world. And then you finally get into it and you're like, oh my God, am I really sure this is what I want to do with my life? Mm -hmm. Am I really sure I'm doing the right thing? Am I actually even creating the impact? Are people feeling me helping them? So my greatest challenge has been my own fears and doubts, issues, self-confidence. But of course, again, being a woman and being young. Some mm -hmm. people find it so hard to you know talk it out um they are facing trauma but talking it out is a problem i mean how do you make these people talk out this so a lot of times you don't get about therapy is mm -hmm. i don't make you to say it i don't make you say nothing uh -huh. if for instance you want it's a 45 minute session and you want to just come in and sit and we stare at each other it's my job to actually just stare back at you until we are done and i say oh, our session for today is done, done. and yeah, thank you so much for coming uh -huh. if you're comfortable talking next time please do mm -hmm. in therapy we don't make people do things we don't solve people's problems everyone has a cap capacity and the capability to be able to solve their own problem do you have any other sponsors that is helping you to sponsor this program all right, so currently we do not have sponsors for Freedom and Healing. We have friends of the organization who basically are friends, just our friends. Mm -hmm. And they're like, mm -hmm. are you doing this great initiative? Let me uh, chip in when you're having activities. Let me buy ABCD. Let me get sanitary towels for the girls. Uh, let me get food for the kids. So that is what we have. You had mentioned earlier that you are a poet and you had launched some album. Can you tell us something about it? You know, a lot of people do different things, but my focus is after Mtu Amemoliza Kusikia Hippies, what is the impact that they are getting out of it? I was part of the East Africa Poetical Battle. Unfortunately, didn't make it to the last round, but uh, still, humble beginnings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, recently, since 2022, won the Mask Awards, a poetry category in the entire Actually, it's East Africa, or I don't know. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emma. And uh, also the last one that is just like happened, I don't know when, but it's so recent, is the Poetry After Lunch National Festival competition. I was the first runners up. Okay, before we conclude, what are your social media handles? Felicity Mood is everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Felicity Mudes for the organization. It's Freedom in Healing also everywhere. Freedom in Healing, yes. Um, thank you, Felicity. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely, I will. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. And to you, our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in to Vibrant Morning Interview Show. Until next time, bye-bye. Back to you, Noel and Rugut in studio.
Insecurity has become a rampant case that has caused fear among students in higher learning institutions. This morning we unfold the story of insecurity around Masai University with our very own Deborah Wamboye. In the recent past, the plight of insecurity has been at its extreme within and around Masai University environs. Random cases of rape, robbery, murder and attacks have recently escalated as students question the presence of security officers around the institution. This being the situation, cases have been filed and the investigations begun, while the events are still fresh in the victims' minds only to end up futile after an eternity. Today, Vibrant Media brings to you some of these victims to narrate their ordeal as they take us through their journey of healing from this psychological torture. In retaliation to the rampant student murders and robbery cases, Vibrant Media tracks back six years ago when another student, Peter Njoroge, was murdered in cold blood in the varsity over unclear circumstances. In response to the IT student's murder, students stormed the alleged killer's home and set his house ablaze. <laughs> Earlier this year, yet another student, James Omolo, was found murdered and his body dumped in a thicket near Pink View Hostels just outside the university. Omolo was in the company of his friend and is suspected to have been attacked by a group of unknown assailants as he was heading back to his... The recent escalation of insecurity cases around Maseno University brings into question the presence and responsibility of the security officers who are mandated for looking into this matter, arresting the perpetrators and ensuring they are put down to book. Reporting for Vibrant Media, my name is Deborah Gitao. Rogoj, when the term crime comes to your mind, what do you think about it? And please to dear speech up. Surprisingly, in Nairobi, Kitengela area, robbers come to your house, they tell you to cook for them, and even had chili on top of it. Let's cross over to Gossip, where we have Dan Maiba, and Chris Mwende. Hello, good morning, and welcome to your amazing talk show, The Morning Vibrant Show, a show that brings you the full package of all the trending gossip stories across the country. Welcome and stay connected with us. My name is Dan Maiba. Wow, welcome to this amazing segment. Stay tuned and get entertained. My name is Grace Mwende. And by the way, Grace, mm -hmm. I'm going to social media uh -huh. and there is this story that caught my attention about the thieves in Nairobi. Which one? The thieves in Kitengela. Uh -huh. Imagine a thief coming into your house, uh -huh. into your room, comfortably asking you to cook for them their favorite <laughs> meal. Let me laugh at this one. No, it's serious. <laughs> How? They come into your room, uh -huh. ask you to cook for them their favorite meal. They have the audacity to ask you to do that. Uh -huh. After eating to their satisfaction, mm. they take everything belonging uh -huh. to you and they go away. Hey, like in the Kiski about it, though this one is the highest point of Mother Rao. Eh, I can't imagine coming into about my it. room, asking it's you, asking me to cook. The and I heard someone say that uh, they even ask you to add kapili pili ko umbali. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one is too much. I said this is so much amazing. Eh? <clears throat> Leave alone that of Kitengela. Uh -huh. There's this lady whose videos are trading. Uh -huh. Eti, she was dancing to patients. I guess you're talking about that uh, nurse. Who the one Elizabeth. The TikToker. Elizabeth yeah, Dubai. Yeah, 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 that one. <laughs> I think that is so much amazing mm. because, you know, many Kenyans, eh. uh, especially in the music industry, have mm -hmm. been trending some bad, uh, bad, uh, bad news. And I think See? to her, mm -hmm. she obtained to trade with good things. Some good things. Eh. And she, the kid was so much amazed. The kid was so mm. much happy. And she was mm. responding positively, oh, she despite was that responding. she was dis uh, Even, admitted in that hospital. I felt so good. Uh, uh, she has also won an award, a three-day oh trip. Oh my God, I wish I was... You wish it were you? I think this as, <laughs> Are you a dancer? Has become so then you can use your extreme. you can use your talent so well. <laughs> the trip has been wow. sponsored by, by Masai Safaris. Three-day trip to Zanzibar. Uh, congratulations to Robai, Elizabeth Robai. Oh, wow, congrats <laughs> to her. Have you seen this one of Diana Marua? Which one? Diana Marua? The one she has posted Diana in B. IG. The one, uh, the, the one who Mawani told you. That one! <laughs> What has it done you know, this time? She posted uh -huh. 80 
ni kuzana kurudi sokoni. She has already given birth. Ni mbinguni. She has she already kwa given birth. Yeah, the last time I checked on Instagram, on her Instagram mm. page, she had a big bum. Ah, baby bum. she has already <laughs> given birth, and now uh -huh. she posted on a, on a social page, uh -huh. uh, quoting that ni kuza na kurudi soko. Ni kuza na kurudi soko. Kupumzika ni mbinguni. I wondered. And, and Rudi Soko ni wapi? Someone said somewhere, that, someone said somewhere, that. someone said somewhere mm. that in Kenya people never rest. We are always in a hurry doing so, something, you see? Mm -hmm. So after giving birth, she has gone back to the market. Mm. To do what to the market? I thought she was taken by the, uh, by Ntoto wa Mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this story about Diana B and Ntoto um, wa Mama reminds me about uh, this lady, Piti Vishi. You know Piti Vishi? Mm. Her name is Purity Vishenwa. <laughs> that lady that was a uh, uh, ex to Steve Simple Boy. Yeah, I remember. She just came all over the internet yesterday and she was uh, saying of how she's charging a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings My to appear God. in a club. <laughs> she's charging how much? A hundred thousand Kenyan shillings. She said that about a dowry is uh, two, two million. Them. She had said her dowry to two million Kenyan two. shillings. And I was wondering I which man, which man will go for a lady that yeah. was charging, uh, that has set her standards to mm. two million Kenyan shillings. I think she's doing this for a re for a relevance. She's looking for relevance, you know. Yeah, when Kenyans they, they they have nothing, they are out of content. Mm. They try to look for relevance. Hey, then uh, this bag is becoming too much. <laughs> so much. So, I see these stories are becoming too much, and yeah. we have so much about our gossips. Mm. And uh, I think we shall preserve some other for next time. And to our viewers, thank you for watching our morning. Talk show. See you next time. My name is Grace Mwende. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, same place, same time. My name is Dan Maiba. Thank you. That brings us to the end of Vibrant Media Morning Session. See you tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Peter Diambo. And I'm Chukimairo. Good. Goodbye. Goodbye.